Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. How are you doing? How was your week? My week was very, very, very busy, but very, very, very productive and very, very, very fruitful. Isn't that good? You know, I was thinking, you ever see like these, uh, I don't see them much because I don't watch sports, but they interview sometimes these athletes and they go, man, I can't believe I get to p- get paid to do something I love to do. I can't believe I get to get paid to do something I love to do. And you know, I don't have to do it part time or make any excuses or be weird about it, you know, but this is, um, this is who you are too. Don't be defined by what you do for a living. If anybody ask who you are, don't ever say, I'm an attorney or I'm a pilot. Don't ever say that. That's all you do that, that's not who you are. Not if you're a believer. That's what you do to put food on the table. But if they ask, you know, who, what do you do, tell them what you do. And better yet, hopefully you're doing it so you don't have to tell them what you do. Okay? Who's that famous man that said, preach the gospel, and if you have to use words? Anybody know? No? I give you a hint. He loved animals. Did somebody say Susan Howard? Look it up. You should know this. He was really, really, really famous. Who? St. Francis of Assisi. Yeah. Yeah. St. Francis of Assisi, yeah. He said, preach the gospel, and if you have to use words, they should see your good works. They should see who you are by the way you conduct yourself. They should see who you are with your character. You don't have to... Words are, right? Words are cheap. Everybody's talking. So now let me read a psalm. (laughs) Get it? See how I just... Okay, this is uh, this psalm, if you have your Bibles, it's 110. This is a little bit of a riddle, but I don't know if you were aware, but this psalm enjoys the distinction of being quoted or referred to more frequently in the New Testament than any other passage in the Old Testament. Did you know that? Well, now you do. Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, you'll see it in Matthew 22, the first line. Uh, Mark 12, Luke 20, and then the second line, sit at my right hand, you'll see it in Matthew 26. I I wrote down this morning all the different places. Mark 14, Luke 22, Acts 2, Acts 5, Acts 7, Romans 8, 1 Corinthians 15, Ephesians 1, Colossians 3, Hebrews 1, and Hebrews 13, Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10, Hebrews 12, 1 Peter, Revelation. you imagine? So David says, Adonai said to my Lord, or the Lord, some of your versions, the Lord said to my Lord. What's he saying? Who's the Lord and who's my Lord? And if you read, I'll just do it quick for you in Matthew 22 so you'll understand the riddle. The Pharisees, who had a real problem, obviously, with him, they weren't horrible people. For some reason, I think a lot of you were raised with Pharisee, bad. Jew, bad. Law, bad. Not necessarily. They were, it just Pharisee means separated one in Parush. And Paul said in Acts, I am a Pharisee. Not I was? No. I am. So that would be pretty sad if you told Paul, you know, you really shouldn't say that. I think he, uh, he was a pretty decent apostle. And a pretty decent disciple, yes? They were separated ones. You should be more pharisaical. You should be more separated from the world. You should be more consecrated unto God. You should be more holy. Of course, you're going to have some Pharisees that weren't up to snuff. But don't we have believers that aren't to snuff? Or don't we have teachers that aren't? I mean, whatever, right? It's an individual thing. So turning to the Pharisees, Yeshua put a question to them. You're always in trouble when Yeshua asks you a question. Because you're not going to be able to answer it usually. He puts you right in the corner. He says, tell me your view concerning the Messiah. Whose son is he? They said to him, David's. Because he had to come from what line? Had to come from the tribe of Judah, the Davidic family. It was a promise, right? He said, David's. 
And he says, then how is it that David, inspired by the Spirit, calls him Lord when he says, Adonai said to my Lord, he's quoting Psalm 110, sit at my right hand. If David calls him Lord, how is he his son? It's a riddle. No one could think of anything to say in reply from that day on, so they never asked him another question. You can shut people down with a question. If you know anything about Jewish people, they will always answer a question with a question. So, going back to the psalm, it says, Adonai said to my Lord, who's the first Lord? God. Who's his Lord? Yeshua. How could he be both David's Lord at the same time and David's son? The answer is he would be both God and man, yes? You've got a God in heaven. He's in heaven. He's omnipresent, but he's in heaven. We're on earth, right? How are you going to connect a God in heaven with man on earth? You need a God-man. You need somebody who's divine and human. You need somebody who can grab onto the hand of the Father and grab onto our hand to make a connection so that the Spirit can flow. It's got to be a connection, right? Right? A lot of you have phones, you have computers. You got to be connected, right? There's got to be something flowing to get the information. So you're like, I don't have a connection. What's the password? You get the password. The password's Yeshua. That's how you get the connection. So he can be both God and man. As God, he's David's Lord. As man, he's David's son. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. Amazing. Just amazing. Amazing. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. What is he talking about here? First advent. Between verse 1 and verse 2, you have the time between his first appearance and his return. You follow? Here's the return. Adonai will send you a powerful scepter out from Zion. Where does he come from? Zion. Where is he going to live? Zion. Who is he the king of? Boy, you don't hear that in Christian circles. No offense. You just don't. And why? It's crazy. Crazy. I don't know. He will send you a powerful scepter out from Zion so that you will rule over your enemies. It's talking about when he comes back. What happens when he comes back? He removes the curse from us. That's when the blessing really starts. People say, well, I'm blessed now. You're blessed a little bit, yeah. But not nothing like when he comes. <laughs> so that you will rule over your enemies around you. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Now I say every. For us, we'll bow willingly and gladly. For the unsaved, they will bow unwillingly. And not happily, but it will be too late. At that point, it will be too late. On the day your forces mobilize, your people willingly offer themselves in holy splendors from the womb of the dawn, the dew of your youth is yours. A lot of theologians have a problem with that. It just says that there'll be numerous people. They'll be fresh and they'll be bright and they'll be powerful because this is what they've been waiting for their whole believing life. Adonai has sworn it. And he will never retract. Guys, I'm just here to tell you, God can relent like he did with Nineveh, yes? He said he was going to judge them in 40 days. They repented. Did he judge them? No, he relented at that point, yes? But when it comes to prophecy, there's no relenting, okay? Prophecy has to come to pass. Do you follow? You can pray all day, stand on your head. Prophecy has to come to pass. Yeshua will return. He will fight the battle of Armageddon. There will be seven years of tribulation. There will be a peace treaty that will be false by the Antichrist, the anti-Messiah. And there will be a war. Read Ezekiel 38. For God's sakes, read Ezekiel 38. There's going to be a war. There's going to be a peace treaty. There has to be a war to have a peace treaty. And it's unfolding. I'm not political. I'm spiritual. But do you see Russia raising their ugly head? That's, that's, it's talked about in Ezekiel 38, one little chapter. 
Now, when, when President 45 was in there, did you see Russia rear his head? No. When 45 was in there, do you know that there wasn't one terrorist attack in all of the Middle East? Do you know there wasn't one terrorist attack in America? And people wanted him in, but God wanted number 46 in. Don't you get it? God holds the hearts of kings in his hands and he guides them like water. Because that war has to happen. Russia doesn't care about the Ukraine. He's testing the waters. He's attacking a country. And guess what? There's not a country or a leader who's confronting him because they don't have the power to. This is amazing. Guys, stop praying for what you want and pray God's will. You're wasting your time. Your will be done. Our Father who art in Howard, He's holy. He's holy. Start with that. Your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Your prayers aren't going to change God's prophetic word. No, how, no way. And God forbid it does. I want Messiah to return. I don't know has sworn it and he will never retract never retract you are a Kohen forever to be compared with Malki Tzedek the king of righteousness we've done many teachings on that and who he is this king Yeshua will have a dual office he'll be a king but he'll be a priest see we have to have separation between church and state you know why I don't trust the state but I trust the born-again church. But when Yeshua comes back, church and state will be one because the king will be a shepherd king and he'll also be a priest. Amen. Hallelujah. You can read about more of that in Zechariah 6. Adonai at your right hand, Adonai is Yeshua. The right hand is God. Will shatter kings on the day of his anger. He, Messiah, will pass judgment among the nations. Filling it with dead bodies. It's, it's, it's sad. We don't tell this part, but it's a very important part to tell these young people and old people. You take the Bible out of context, you tell them God is love. Yeah, that's one part of God. Yeah, that's one. He's also holy. That's another part. He's also just. Don't just tell that part either. Don't, don't be one of those guys. Tell the whole story. I, I've never been in court, but as far as I know, when you go to court, don't you have to put your hand on a Bible? And what do you say? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and that's in man's court. You're in God's court. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. He will pass judgment among the nations, filling it with dead bodies. He will shatter heads throughout an extensive territory. He will drink from a stream as he goes on his way meaning he will be full of power in the Holy Spirit therefore he will hold his head high which means he will reign and he will be victorious you don't have to be afraid and I know some of you miss your loved ones but do you realize you'll see them forever that's a long time would you trade forever for 10 years no no if God gave me the opportunity to see one of my loved ones for 10 years I wouldn't trade it no. And if you ask anybody who's there if they'd like to come back, you would get an emphatic no. No. I don't believe people went to heaven because I think if they did, they'd kill themselves and go back. There's only one man in the Bible who says he went to heaven. And he said, I saw things that I can't even recount to you. I'm not allowed. Because if you knew what was waiting for you, you wouldn't be able to deal with this. And people that are extremely happy here, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy with the Lord. I'm happy in my salvation. I'm happy preaching the gospel. I'm happy submitting myself to God and working for God. I'm happy hearing his voice. But this is good. Going is better. Doesn't the Bible say that somewhere? Didn't somebody kind of semi-famous in here say the die is gain? This is good, that's better. Why stop there? When he comes, it's best. It's best. 
people in the world they love the best oh you gotta try this this is the best right no that pillow isn't so good that only cost three hundred dollars this pillow is seven hundred dollars you get up and your neck is it's the best this mattress you gotta try it's the best this restaurant they have the best well why don't you want the best in the kingdom for centuries nobody prayed for Yeshua to come back you know why things were pretty good now all of a sudden the saints are crying out that's a good thing that's a good thing I can almost see Yeshua saying to his father how come nobody's crying for me to come back do, do they like it so much down there they don't trust me to come back and rule and reign they don't want me to rule over them I can't wait till he comes back you know why it says that when he comes back he'll teach us his ways then I don't got to listen to numbskull human beings in their finite wisdom that think they know everything so you see through a glass dimly okay you might hear something that you disagree with but you might just be wrong so I'm here to tell you be free you're at Beth Yeshua and I want you to know from the very bottom of my heart, you have the right to be wrong today in Yeshua's name. Father, thank you very much for this opportunity to gather. Thank you very much that we're in a country that we don't even know what persecution is. I'm sure at some point it's going to come. It's prophesied. But when it does, I'm sure we'll be ready in the spirit. Hopefully we'll be singing your praises to the very day we die because you are worthy. We're so grateful and thankful that you chose us. What lucky, lucky, lucky beggars we are. Father, I hope and pray that you're blessed. Uh, we spoke a lot this morning and last night. I know you got plans. All I want to do is get out of the way. Do what you want. It's your house. And we love you and bless you in your son's holy name. It's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.